When we work with the rejection region method, we still care whether or not we're doing a z-test or a t-test. And when we do left tail test, right tail test, or two tail tests, they're all a little bit different and take some getting used to. So in the next example, some of them are familiar, some not, I'm going to make sure you see each different tail test. And so this is an example we did before with the p-value method where we were trying to figure out if there's evidence that the average purchase is more than 10 gallons. And so we're wondering, is the mean more than 10 versus the uh, assumption that the mean is equal to 10, which we write as the complement less than or equal to 10. Okay, so usually at this stage we do a p-value. But now instead, what I'm going to do is the rejection region method. And so how I know which curve to use, which table to use, well, just like before, here in this problem, sigma is known. And so that means I'm using a z-test. And so what that means to us in the rejection region method is that my distribution I draw um, is going to be from a normal distribution, and the test statistic is also going to be from a normal distribution. So my test statistic is a z. And it's actually a z-score modified to apply to the sampling distribution. And so it looks like this. So this on the bottom is actually the standard error. And so this is our hypothesized mean. And so when I plug in my values for this, I get 10.4 minus 10, and then divided by 1.2 over the square root of 40. Now it's very important you practice this in the calculator, make sure you get the same thing as me. I got 2.11, but it's very easy to type this incorrectly. So make sure you check. Now what I want to do now is compare Z to Z alpha. Z alpha comes from a standard normal distribution because we're using a Z test. And so what I do is I say, okay, I know I'm using a standard normal distribution, so that looks like a normal curve with a mean of zero. And then I say, well, this is a right tail test, so what I want to do is put alpha off to the right. And so this is my alpha equals 0 0.05, and I want to know what is this cutoff? What z-score has 5% of the area to the, or to the right? And so I can use inverse normal to find that. And because inverse normal wants only area to the left, it'd be inverse norm of 0.95 which in this case equals 1.64. Okay, that's my cutoff. So now what you do is you compare Z to your cutoff. Since it's a right tail test, you're wondering if Z is bigger than your cutoff, if it's in the shaded region. It's always equivalent, the inequalities you see in your textbook are always equivalent to checking if it's in the shaded region or not. So I look at 2.11, I say, well, that's bigger than 1.64, that's somewhere out here, which is very much in the rejection region. So that means that I reject H0. And now I come to the same conclusion I did before, that that means there is evidence that the average purchase is more than 10 gallons. So the only thing that changed was how I made my decision. This whole thing here kind of replaces what our p-value was before, but it's actually equivalent. In fact, the p-value, if you're interested, is actually going to be this area to the right. So you can see naturally the p-value would be smaller than alpha. But this is equivalent, and we don't actually have to know the p-value to do it. And so that's a right tail test. What about the other types of tests? What else could we see? Well, let's take a look at this example. In this example, uh, office manager believes that the average waiting time is less than 15 minutes. So we want to test this hypothesis. Okay, so we're testing H0, HA. The mean is less than 15 versus the mean is more than or equal to 15. Okay, so I want to box that up so it's out of my way and I don't accidentally write on it. Okay, so next question is, well, if we're using the rejection region, I need to know which test we're using. So I look at the information, and we have a sample mean, we have a sample standard deviation, we have no information about the population. In other words, sigma is unknown. So it implies I should use a t-test. That means that my test statistic will be a t-statistic and that my distribution will actually be a t-distribution. Now the t-test statistic is x bar minus mu naught, but now it's over s divided by the square root of n because I don't know sigma, I have to use s here. And once I use s there, the distribution, the sampling distribution is no longer normal, which is why I have t. Now when I plug in my values for this, I get 16.2 uh, minus 15 divided by 2.9 over the square root of 30. And so a quick calculation gives us this 2.27. All 
All right, so now I need my rejection region so I can compare this to the test, uh, the test statistic to my critical value. So I go through and I draw what looks like a normal distribution. It even has a mean of zero, but remember the T distribution looks very close to the standard normal. The big difference is there's more area out here. Now this is a left tail test, which means that I want to place area, area of alpha to the left. But since this is a T distribution, this is going to be a T alpha. And since it's to the left of zero, it's a negative T alpha. And so what I also need is the degrees of freedom. It's going to be n minus 1 always for this type of test. And so this is going to be 29 because n is 30, the sample size of 30. All right, so what I do is I look in my table uh, for the row, which corresponds to degrees of freedom 29. And then I go all the way over until I see one tail 0.05. And when I do this, I see positive 1.699. But because I'm on the left-hand side, a left tail test is actually negative 1.699. All right, so comparing what I have to this, I would say this is way outside of this region, right? This is way over here. And so this is certainly not smaller than negative T alpha. And so this is larger than negative T alpha. So this is outside my rejection region. If it's outside your rejection region, that's when you fail to reject H naught. This actually corresponds with how far off this is to a very large p-value, because the p-value, since this is a left tail test, would be the area to the left of 2.27. So I fail to reject H0. That means there is no evidence the waiting time is less than 15 minutes on average. And so as you can see, sometimes I can have very strong rejections or very strong fail to reject. In other words, the further this is off over here, the less evidence I have towards HA. The closer it is, the more evidence I have towards HA. So let's take a look at uh, a two-tail test and how that might be different. So this is actually a two-tail test we did before. This is where we were trying to determine if the uh, mean credit score for high-income individuals was different than the, what it is for everybody else. So we were wondering, is the mean for high-income different than 703.5 versus the same? So last time we did a p-value uh, p-value method on this. This time we're not. We're going to use a rejection region. And remember, in this case, sigma is once again unknown. We only have the sample standard deviation. So that means we have to use a t-test again. OK, so as before, I calculate my t-test statistics. So t is going to be x bar minus mu, so 714.2 minus 703.5 divided by 83.2 over the square root of 41. And so for this, when you round it, I get about 0.8. And so now that I have my t-test statistic, I want to get my rejection region. And so I get my rejection region. And I say, OK. There's my t distribution. There's 0. This is a two-tailed test. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a negative t alpha and I'm going to have a positive T alpha as cutoffs. Now I put half of alpha here, half of alpha here, and so this is going to actually be 0 0.025, and this is going to actually be 0 0.025. And so if that's the case, then when I look at my test statistic, I'm actually comparing to two different things. But the, again, it goes the same. If it's in the shaded region, I reject, else, you know, else I fail to reject. Okay, so what I want to know before I can look in the table is what's my degrees of freedom. It's going to be 41 minus 1. So it's 40. OK, so what I want to do is look in the row for degrees of freedom 40. And now what I want to look is where it says two tail 0.05, because our alpha is 0.05 and it's a two tailed test. You'll see it also is the same as one tail 0.025. But again, it's a two tail test and alpha is 0.05. And so what I get is T alpha is 2.0211. That means negative T alpha is negative 2.0211. So looking at uh, my test statistic T, we are definitely in between these two. So this is somewhere maybe here. And so this is also a fail to reject. So this is a fail to reject H0 because I'm not in the shaded region. So fail to reject H0. So as before, I have uh, no evidence that the mean for high income individuals is different.
you should always get the same final result as you did when you were doing the p-value method. Again, it's just a change in perspective, but it, in the end, it gets the same result.